We'll be all right. We'll be here next year, coming back. And uh, how about the status of Mike Rodney and uh, Vinny again? It looks like you know Vinny not even to come out and stand by yeah, you guys right. seemed uh, very low in team spirit to me. So what do you well, what's your comments about Vinny, that? Vinny's played his last game on the Aqua Maulers, and so was Mike Rodney. But uh, they gave us some good years. But when we needed them the most, uh, you know, they didn't come through for us. So. Um, Life goes on. Well, writing for the newspaper, I had picked the Aquamoles in three, and uh, oh, today I thought you guys would come out, you know, like didn't the second game. That way, Jan. I, <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I tried to do the best I could. Uh, yeah. It seemed that the refereeing didn't matter in this no, game. No, not it at was, all. It, they, you uh, guys played both clean hockey. Yeah. It got rough and bumpy, but mm -hmm. you let it go on both sides, and it evens out. Right. And uh, I don't think that had a factor. But Michael, you're probably the most, in my opinion, improved player this league has ever seen, and we'll Thank see you. in a long time. Thank you very Mike much. Garowitz, Captain Aquamoles. Hope to see Jan Goldberg in an Aquamoles uniform <laughs> next year. See you later. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mike. Uh, talking with, in my estimation, one of the three best players in this hockey league, uh, Jamie Overmeyer, defenseman, standout for the uh, championship Red Scorpions. What do you think about today's uh, game? Well, first of all, I have to disagree with you being the, being one of the three best. But uh, anyway, uh, not, my, no, not from these eyes. Uh, I'm real happy it happened this way. I was expecting you know a real tight game. I was hoping we'd win, but to win six to one is, is just an, an unbelievable surprise for us, and we're real happy it happened that way. Even though we, we lost one last week, it's real real good that it happened like this. A couple of comments on your goalie, Jeff Pine, who most said was wasn't up to the uh, test today, but he looked more than up to the test. He's had uh, his skeptics all season. Uh, even uh, you know all of us on the team have probably you know not not stood behind him like we should have, and he really did stand up to the test today. The last glove save that he made was a rocket. It was like the exclamation point in the game. And our defense, I don't think, could have played a better game today. How do you guys do it with three defensemen? Always it was miraculous. Three guys stopping, blocking more shots than you know Al Arbor did when he was in his prime. How do you guys attest to three defensemen and winning it all? Um, I'm not really sure how it happened out there. I mean, we're exhausted. Poop and I are really exhausted out there and Enzo played a super super game and hopefully we can add a couple next year so we don't have to all get so tired but it's just a tremendous
tremendous effort on, on all of our parts. It really is. Everybody gave it their all today, and it really showed. It absolutely did. And speaking of next year, just one quick comment on new acquisition, Dan Tepp. How's that going to fit in uh, the scheme of things? Well, Dan, you know, I see Danny fitting more in as a deep defender, but I, you know, I really think he probably can add more to the team, you know, as, as an offenseman. Uh, hopefully, we can just pick up two more, you know, defenders and maybe uh, maybe have a complete team next year. You might get a rest even, huh? Well, hopefully, we can pick up somebody else. Maybe maybe the commentator. We're trying to work on it for next year. I want to get him on camera. As a matter of fact, I want to ask him if he's thinking about going to any other teams next year. He's really going to tire as, retire as the commissioner. If I come back, and it won't be in the summer, but it'll be back in the winter, it'll be hopefully in a red uniform. Well, we'll do our best to get him back next season. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Jamie. Good luck, right. congratulations, and congratulations, and more down the road. Thank you. I just want to say Mike Irwich played a dirty fucking game. Oh, Mike, I didn't see. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> A little comedy here. I want to speak to Joe Falco, captain of the championship Red Scorpions for the second year in a row. A couple of comments on today's game. I'm fucking tired. <laughs> uh, I thought the whole series was awesome. I mean, it, I, I don't know how we went as big as we did the last game. I think we were just probably a little hungrier than, we, than they were. And we just Everyone just hustled, hustled their ass off. Uh, I mean, everyone just gave 110%. A lot of guys that don't run as much as they have ran their asses off. Uh, like especially Joe Crotty, I mean, we just gave it 110%. Um, but I thought it was a great series all the way. I mean, either team could have won. Personally, you know, on the roster, the Red Ross, you got a lot of skilled players. Joe having maybe a little less skill, but not meaning he's not a good player. I thought you rose to the occasion and played tremendous playoff hockey. Every game of the series that I saw, and I, I reffed all three, you were outstanding and definitely helped the team play. What do you attribute to playing around Allen and all those guys yeah, and Dan? Definitely. I mean, you hang around with guys like that, you're going to pick up something. Even like a stiff like me can pick up something. <laughs> I wouldn't use the word stiff. I would use the word very versatile and, and learn real quick what to do and with the ball and without the ball. How about next year? What do you guys plan for next year? Uh, same thing. We're going to lose a few players and pick up a few players. i got to talk to you, by the way. <laughs> um, Seems to be the uh, key. Moment. Danny Ellis uh, won't be able to play next season because he's got other commitments but he'll be back the season after that. The Winter League. Most seems most players are opting to stay out of this Summer League because of, you know, it's February here and it's... And it's pussies. Pussies. <laughs> I would, pussies. 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 Well, mind. some people are 35 and older, you don't have to. But congratulations. Thanks, you guys played super. And if there's any team that deserved to win the cup, you guys did for sure. Thanks, man. Thanks very much. Good luck next year. Street Hockey News in South Florida and uh, on the Aqua Malls, defenseman Joe Delgado. Joe, I know it's a tough loss and... Uh, He's checking his look in the mirror, a little Springsteen no, action. in there? No, you're looking good. Okay. Uh, I know it was a tough loss, and uh, but it just didn't seem to me, to these eyes, that the Aquamalls came out to play today. Jan, they were strictly better than us. They were easily better than us today. They may have been better than us, period. They blocked shots. We got absolutely no offense, and it wasn't because we didn't have the guys. We had the right guys, but they had, they had better guys that stopping us. I was all over Karate, and he still managed to score a couple of goals, and he beat me a couple other times. And, even though Bob was great, um, they exploited every weakness we had. They exploited our, our, our weaker defense. Bob uh, has a tendency to give up some long shots on occasion. Uh, they just, they exploited us and we didn't exploit back. Speaking of that long shot, it seemed like that was the backbreaker to me. You know, you guys were hustling, came out in the third period, and uh, Lane takes that, which I think is one of the most dreaded plays in this league, a free shot from anywhere on the, on the uh, surface. But he beat Bob on a long shot, and you guys seem to have lose a little spark from there. Well, you know, that's the goal that we go in. We shut them down in the second period as pretty much the only period that we have shut them out, shut them down in the, in the whole series. They only had two goals in the second period before that in the two games. And uh, two, down 2 nothing, we can come back against anybody 2 nothing. but now you're talking 3 nothing against a great team like Red in the championship where it's very physical, it's hard to score goals, and that was, that was big. It was right after the period started. We were supposed to come out with a lot of fire, and that just... Uh, that just turned the tables around. They had all the fire. What about the uh, play of uh, opposing goaltender Jeff Pine? It seemed to me he was lived up to the test today. Second championship. Pine Pine was was strong throughout the whole championship, uh, which was uh, he was definitely a factor. But I don't think it was that strong. He wasn't tested that severely. He had he he made a couple of real good saves. He made an incredible save on Weiss uh, sometime during the third period. He made a decent save on me uh, sometime in the second period. Uh, I think he robbed Mike on another time, Mike Gerwitz, uh, but he didn't have that many. He wasn't tested that strongly. He probably didn't even break that much of a sweat. There was, there's no doubt that they clearly outshot us in each and every single period. Knowing that, you know, the red team plays a little uh, less successful on the lose, you know, going down a couple of goals, how you guys didn't come out shooting at all. It seemed like you had trouble breaking out while the red team had little trouble breaking out. Well, I, I tend to disagree with you there, Jan. Um, when, at least during the playoffs, when when Red gets a lead, or or even when they get, when they've given up a goal, they always they always stay tough. They never gave up two straight goals to us in the playoffs, and they probably didn't do it to gold either. Maybe they did once, but 
they are the only team that managed to string together goals. We never did it. We never could uh, mount a serious rally with two or three or four unanswered goals. They, they, were, they had a lot of heart. They never backed down at any time. Losing Mike Masaccio, and we just heard uh, previously losing Vinny Proquillo for next year. What's the Aquamola's plans for next year? I don't know what the plans are right now. I think, uh, I think we haven't really seriously considered it, but uh, my gut feeling is that, uh, that this was our best chance for a little while at least, at, definitely at least for the next season, unless uh, Gerowitz can uh, pull some sort of magic uh, out of his hat and, and steal somebody. But there's so many teams right now that are dying for players. It's a recruiting war like this league has never seen. Gold is in desperate need of players. Falco says he's still looking around. Uh, Yellow's coming back, and they only had a couple of players to begin with, so they're looking. Uh, lots of phone calls are being made. The only team that really isn't looking for anybody is White. So there just aren't that many players to go around. I mean, I, what, what I, can we do in this league to get more players to come out? What, what, what's the answer here? I, I think a first, a first minor step would be opening up the playoff system. Uh, too many players come into this league and go and disappear. Lots of good players have played and just gone because they've played on bad teams that don't have a chance at anything, and they don't even have a chance at, at the playoffs. And and there's no reason to come out after you've been playing on a team that's been routed three or four weeks in a row. Last year, yellow folded midway through the season. We've had a lot of teams that have come in with good talent. You know Mark Renner. That's correct. He was around. Maybe he, I mean, I know that he had to work and stuff, and I'm sure it wasn't because he was on a bad team, because he wasn't, but maybe he would have had more motivation to come back if he could have known that he could have easily jumped in on a good team. Right. So they're, you know, South Florida is not a hot, is not a hotbed for talent. We got we got to conserve the talent that we have, and then try and build up the interest that way. You see that coming into the final, we didn't really have anybody from the other teams out here, and I guarantee you that if we had all seven teams in the playoffs, we probably still would have had the right two teams in the championship. Plus, we would have had a big turnout. The interest would have been up. More friends would have told more friends. That's that's the only thing I could say. Well, let's just speak one second about the also game next week. What do you think of the chances of that coming off? It sounds pretty good, uh, but I know have I you haven't gotten any rebuttal from the players yet. Are they showing? Are they not showing? Uh, well, I, I, everybody that I talk to tells me they're coming, and I really think that we're going to have one, which is amazing to me. I, I've really plugged it in every issue. Every I've talked issue? to everybody. I I handed out letters and invitations and stuff. I did my part, and I think it might actually come off. I tried to do this before; it didn't work, but uh, I think. Uh, the reaction from the reaction that I'm getting from everybody else, we're going to have a real good all-star team. Just to let me know and other players involved in the all-star game, the uh, Red Scorpions will be wearing their red shirts, but what are, what are the uh, all-star teams going to be wearing this year? Um, well, I guess as the uh, spokesperson of the, of the all-star team, um, I would suggest that everybody wears their own jerseys. I think uh, I think that's definitely the way to go. Like Major League Baseball. Joe, thanks on a, a hard, a tough defeat. Good luck, I mean, uh, in the paper in the future, and a class player in the league, Joe Delgado. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We're standing with big major red uh, red fan here, Claudia. For I don't know less. I'm sorry, from uh, Claudia Glass from the Red Scorpion uh, entourage. They say you have a pretty uh, good left hook there. Me? Uh, well, I try. I mean, watching one game early, I saw her take a shot at one of the players in the league. And uh, you gonna ever get on a get a stick and gloves and come out and do it yourself? Well, if they'd let me, maybe I try. I'm uh, trying know, to get a women's team. I know, thought I thought it'd be good to have um, the. Um, the women of white play the women of red. What about a co-ed league ever? You see anything oh, like that? Oh, well, it might be a little hard, but I think it'd be a good idea. My father always told me to go out with the goalie's daughter. She was easiest to score on, but, you know, girls in hockey, I just don't know. Well, we'll keep, we'll keep being nice and vocal from the sidelines. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Go Red! Aquamola goaltender Bob Allenson. Bobby, a tough loss, and uh, you guys uh, came up against a real good hot team today. What do you think? Well, they were hot. They seemed to want it more. They beat us to most balls, and um, they're a good team. They got a lot of good shooters. They have, uh, they play real good D, and they play us well. They match up well against us, and uh, we're very evenly matched. Today was their day. It seemed like they came out with a, a, a solid game plan, and Aqua was trying to find their game plan. What was their game plan? Tomorrow? Well, we thought that if we could keep them from bringing the ball out of their zone, in other words, start them in, the, in our attacking zone, that we could create the turnovers and get the shots on goal. Didn't work out that way. They uh, they played it out of their own zone well. They created some two on ones uh, and uh, three on twos, and they got better opportunities. And uh, hey, next season's a couple weeks away. You put it behind you. Right, before we get to next season, uh, it's a, a question going around the league. Will you be here next week to, to represent the All-Star team? Oh, absolutely. I was honored to be on the All-Star team. Okay, we had heard previous reports saying that, you know, if you weren't on the championship team, you, you might not want to play. I'd How do you that. feel now? I admit I said that, but I want to play. 
You yeah. want to play? As long as, are you going to be there? Uh, sure. I'll be yeah. Who are we speaking to? Who's this? I, you know, this is no... Joey. This is Joe Karate's sister, Joe. Oh, hi. How you Her doing? mother obviously didn't have much of imagination. Oh. Let's call this one Joe and this one Joe. It's like okay. George Foreman well, here. What's her name? Joey. Joey. Yeah. Joey, Joey and Joe. Lynn. Joey you Lynn. have two brothers named Larry and Daryl and Daryl and all that too? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's nice to see you. What do you think of the game? You got to come a little closer. I'm not, you know, Reed Richards. What do I, th I don't know. It was a good game. <laughs> I'm not biased. I'm both teams with Barney Badass and... Scorpions. What do you think of your little brother? My little brother. Joe older brother. Oh, he did good. He's a good player. And excellent. Excellent. Excellent player. I don't know. Excellent. Who were you rooting for? <laughs> I was rooting for the Scorpions, but I was rooting for Barney to play good. Okay, that's pretty tough, huh? Well, thanks a lot, guys. And Bobby. Congratulations. Thank or, you know, Thank next you. year I know Thank you'll do better. Be and back. Nice to see you. We'll be back. Thank you. Thank you very much.